What happens when life throws us a conflict or life doesn't give us what we work for and what we want? What happens when we working for something and we sacrifice, stay dedicated, stay committed, and it gives time for it to happen and manifest and God says no? What happened when you're married and you, you've been working on this marriage, you come into the house one day, you've been working on it, and your wife says, honey, I know we've been trying to work through this, but I don't love you no more, I want a divorce. What happens when you can interpret scripture, you can break it down, cut it, slice it, but you just can't seem to communicate with your 15-year-old son? What happens, better yet, you've been building a company, everything has been going great, and you get to the point to where it just doesn't work out the way that you want it to work out, and the opposition, the adversity, and the challenges set in, and now this is why I love adversity, because adversity introduces you into who you really are as a person, and I don't even think more times than not, the problem is not even the adversity, the problem is when the adversity reveals who you really are, you can't take it. What do you do when everything is falling apart? You, if you knew it was falling apart, guess what you would not have done? You would have never uh, got on the boat. You would have never moved into the house. You would have never married the man or the woman that you married. If you had known all these things were going to take place in your relationship and in your life, you would have never done those things at all. Matter of fact, if you knew that you were going to have to go through what you were going through just to maintain your salvation, guess what? You wouldn't have done it at all challenge of growth mentally emotionally and spiritually comes when you get knocked down what did you say to the kid it ain't about how hard you hit it's about how hard you can get hit and keep moving forward how much you can take and keep moving forward how you handle it that's where the growth takes place. What has brought you to this point? What did you learn from it? Are you learning anything? Or are you doing it over and over and over again? Are you going through it or are you growing through it? Are you bigger and better because of it? Because it's not going to leave you until you grow through it. Pain is temporary. It may last for a minute, or an hour, or a day, or even a year. But eventually, it will subside, and something else will take its place. What are you going to do with what you have? I'm not talking about how much you have. Some of you are business majors, some of you are theologians, nurses, sociologists, some of you have money, some of you have patience, some of you have kindness, some of you have love, some of you have the gift of long suffering, whatever it is, whatever your gift is, what are you going to do with what you have? I need, to, I need you to find out who you are. What's your dream? What's driving you? What makes you tell hell to get back? What will carry you through a prison? What will carry you through a storm? What will cause you to get up when everything says slam yourself down? After all you've been through, after every attack and you're still here, how dare you live like the way you're living? By the same token, if you want to begin to move, you've got to clear your mind of all the unnecessary luggage and baggage that's weighing us down. So pretty soon, I, I learned through effort, made a conscious, deliberate, determined effort. I had to let it go. I had to forgive it. Let it go and begin to focus on developing myself. And I say to you, you're going to have people to do things to you. Things are going to happen to you. And the most important thing to do is to harness your will and let it go so you can get on with your life. It doesn't matter about what happens to you. What matters is, what are you going to do about it? That's how winning is done. Now, if you know what you're worth, then go out and get what you're worth. But you've got to be willing to take the hit and not pointing fingers saying you ain't where you want to be because of him or her or anybody. Cowards do that and that ain't you. You're better than that. When you want something out of life, don't worry about how you're going to get it. How is none of your business. If you can believe it, if you can see it, it is possible.
Because as humans, I think naturally we go into situations sometimes and we're selfish. And so we want to see how can this benefit me? How can I go into the situation and it best benefits me and everybody that I'm connected? Like how can I get the edge in this situation? Instead of stepping back and understanding that when you're selfish, it's a dangerous thing because when you're selfish and you go into situations at a certain point in life, we're always going to come up against something that's a lot tougher than us. And if we're always selfish, nine out of ten times, if the only thing we think about is just ourselves, when we hit something that's a lot tougher than us, we don't have a driving force to do what we do. And so it's easy for us to surrender, step back and say, man, forget it. I'll throw it away. It's just like I'm married, right? And so I'm young. I'm six years in. And so I went to an old couple one time and they were married. Some crazy years, 60 years, something like that. And I said, right, crazy, insane. But I'm saying, how did you make it last that long? And they said, the reason we made it last this long is because we come from an era when something is broken, we don't throw it away, we fix it. And so as people, the way I approach situations, how can when something is broken, I don't throw it away and I don't let the circumstance or the situation define my life, but I try to figure out how can I fix it and fixing it may not be my arm working, but fixing it may be me using it every day to be a blessing in somebody else's life.